fight the fall Following yourself It's the time to make the call You're winning at my back You're winning at my back yeah. Your hand goes before me I'm strengthened by your grace oh, yeah. I'll never be the same I'll get there with you
evening, everyone, and welcome to our Insights into Wisdom episode. It is going to be such an incredible evening, and I am so excited to see each and every one of you online tonight. Praise the Lord. We have an awesome topic ahead of us, maintaining healthy relationships during uncertain times. Well, here we are in uncertain times, and we've got to maintain those relationships. So I am excited for tonight just to get into some wisdom them, get some tips, get some insights so that we can work toward maintaining healthy relationships during this pandemic period. It is going to be absolutely awesome. And do not forget to submit your questions to our anonymous text line. It's so important that you do so because we want to make sure that we're hitting on all the topics that you want to hear about and answering the questions that you want to know about. God bless you. I just want to take a couple minutes and welcome a few people tonight. Marina, God bless you. Welcome. It's so nice to see you. Vanelle, it's nice to see you as well. God bless you. Bienvenue. Letla Thompson, God bless you. Nice to see you this evening. Joya, always wonderful to see you on a Wednesday night. Praise the Lord. You are all so welcome. It is going to be a fantastic time tonight. But before we get into our conversation, before we go any further, further, let us just lay the foundation in prayer. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. You are always awesome. You are always mighty. My God, you are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. My God, tonight we commit this conversation in your hands. Father, give us wisdom. Give us insight. Show us great and mighty things that we do not know. Help us to strengthen our relationships, strengthen our marriages, strengthen our courting. My God, tonight we commit this entire conversation into your hands. Holy Ghost, have your sweet way. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and we glorify you. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. And now before we go any further, let us go into a time of worship with our very own Minister Reginald. CLC family, I'm just so excited that we can all be here as we enter into a time of worship. Wherever you're watching from, why don't we lift up our hands? Why don't we lift up our hands and invite the Holy Spirit? Why don't we lift up our hands and invite the Holy Spirit? We invite you, Jesus. We invite you, Jesus. We invite you, Jesus. We invite you, Jesus. We invite you. Oh, come and take your place, Jesus. Oh, come and take your place. Sing you renew the broken part of us. You restore and you give more than enough. Lord, all we want, oh, Holy Ghost, is an open heaven. Oh, Holy Ghost, sing you renew. broken part of us and you restore and you give more than enough Lord all we want oh, Holy Ghost is an open heaven yeah. oh, Holy Ghost is an open heaven All that we ask for, oh, oh, oh. 
an open heaven, Holy Ghost. Oh, we need an open heaven, Holy Ghost. Hey, we need an open, we need an open heaven. We need an open, we need an open, we need an open heaven. Like a rushing wind, Lord, like a wave of fire, Lord, however you want to, Lord, however you want to go, like a rushing wind, Lord, like a wave of fire, Lord, however you want to go, how. Lord, we sing, like a rushing wave. Lord, like a wave of fire. Like a wave of fire. Lord, however you want to. However you want. Lord, however you want. Just to receive Lord, however you want However you want to Lord, however you want to Lord, however you want to Move whatever you want to Whatever you want Lord, whatever, whatever Whatever's in your way, Jesus, come and move it. Sing however you want. However you want. However, 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 however. Say, fill the room, fill the room. Lord, fill the room, fill the room. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Lord, fill the room, fill the room, fill the room, fill the room. Holy Spirit, sing holy. We sing, fill the room, fill the room, fill the room. Oh, Holy Spirit.
Jesus, all we want, all we want, oh, Holy God, is an open heaven, oh, Holy God, we need an open heaven, oh, oh, oh. As for is an open, we need an open heaven. Open, we need an open heaven. We need an open heaven. We need an open heaven. That's your desire, see. We need an open heaven. We need an open heaven. Jesus need an open. We need an open heaven. 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 Father God, we are here in your presence, Jesus. And our only desire is an open heaven, Jesus. Our only desire, our only request, our only ask is an open heaven, Jesus. Come and fill our rooms, come and fill our hearts, fill our minds, fill our spirits. Fill our spirits with your power and cause there to be an open heaven wherever we may go. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And if you believe it, why don't you comment down a loud amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you so much, Minister Reginald, for that amazing time in worship. Praise the Lord. If you were blessed by that worship, why don't you type amen in the chat tonight? A big, loud amen. Hallelujah, because we are here tonight at our Insights into Wisdom conversation, and we are ready to tap into some serious wisdom. Tonight's topic is maintaining healthy relationships in uncertain times. I am really looking forward to this topic. I think it is going to be an amazing topic. You know, it, we are living through difficult times right now during the pandemic, and I am really, really excited to tap into what God has in store for us tonight. But first, I just want to take a couple minutes and greet some people in the chat tonight. I want to acknowledge the fact that you showed up. You are online. You are logged in. Praise the Lord. Nancy Paul Rock, I see you. Amen, amen, amen. Priscilla, I see you as well. Hallelujah. Mateo, I see you. God bless you. Sandra, Auntie Sandra, so nice to see you online tonight. Praise the Lord. Mary Chantel, God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stella, welcome to you as well. God bless you. Always a pleasure to see you as well. Yeah, you are welcome too. Pastor Ken, I see you on there with the fire emojis tonight. Samuel, Bishop Sam, good God bless you. Nice to see you online tonight as well. It is going to be an amazing tonight. night tonight. We are here with a couple of very special people. I say a couple because they are a couple, and they are very special. In fact, they are our couple's pastors here at TLC Ottawa. Um, you know, and I'm super excited to be joined by them tonight. We have our very own Pastor Gary and Pastor Julie together with us tonight. Why don't we take a minute and welcome them in the chat tonight? Let's thank God for their lives. Let's thank God that they showed up to talk to us tonight. Yes. Praise the Lord. Thank you pray, guys are guys. so welcome. Thank you. And I'm excited about this topic tonight. It is. It's a, it's a nice topic. It's going to be fun. Yes, It is going to be fun. Praise the Lord. Sir. And you know, you, you guys are such beautiful people. I'm just so excited also to have you on the platform with us tonight just oh, to pour you. into us. It's really such a blessing. Thank you. Thank you. It really is a blessing to be able to, you know, worship just under the presence of God right yeah. here at TLC and it's an honor to be able to sit under um, dad and, and, and mom and their leadership. So thank Amen. you so much. Amen. Pastor, for having us today. Oh, we thank God. It's such a blessing to have you. And you know, we're living in this difficult times right now. We've got the pandemic going on. And you know, the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about mental health and the pandemic and how to kind of face some of those challenges. But we all know that we're facing so many stressors right now, especially, especially in our own homes, right? I mean, we're, some of us are working from home. Some of the kids are schooling from, in fact, right now, 
all the kids are schooling from home, you know, and then you've got the spouse thing trying to go on and you're trying to relate. You've got your relationships. Some, some of the younger folks who are not yet married are trying to create these relationships and move toward marriage. I mean, there's just so many challenges. Um, so I'm glad that we're able to tackle this topic a little bit tonight. Glad to have you here. And I just want to remind all the viewers tonight to please don't forget to text your questions. We want to make sure that we're asking the questions that you actually want to know about and hear the answers to. Um, so don't be shy. It is an honor. As, as soon as you can, any question you have about this topic or related to this topic tonight, we definitely want to hear from you. So, not everyone that's viewing with us tonight, not everyone that's tuned in knows the two of you. So I first just wanted, you know, to throw it out there to the two of you, our couples pastors, such a beautiful couple, beautiful children, beautiful family. Um, if you guys can just maybe introduce yourselves a little bit, just talk, tell us a little bit about who you are, um, a little bit about your marriage, and then a little bit about the couples ministry at the church as well. Uh, definitely. Thank you for having us. This is uh, it's pretty exciting to be here, um, especially being on this platform under this great leadership of Dr. Ralph and uh, Mama Regina. It's so awesome to be here. And uh, my name is Gary, and this is my beautiful wife, Juliana. <laughs> um, so we've been married for 15 years. Uh, we met at Carleton back in 2005, and you know things got rolling right away. Within a year, we were married. Had a child and just got thrust into the, into life, you know. So, um, we've been fortunate. We've been through some things, you know, ups and downs, um, you know, trying to juggle raising children and, you know, growing our careers and all this stuff, just trying to survive and, you know, build our relationship and so forth. And at this point, we are the couples um, leaders at this church, and it's a great pleasure. We we interact with a lot of great couples. And uh, Dr. Ralph, in his leadership, he has a real big heart for when it comes to marriage, and he really takes that seriously. And it's important because families are the bedrock of society. If you have strong families, you, de you definitely have a strong community. So um, it's definitely an honor to be in this position, and we take it seriously. And we just want to make sure that, uh, you know, every resource we have or whatever we know, we use it to build or contribute to the lives of others. So... I mean, we don't know everything, but uh, we're, we're learners. And every day is a learning experience, and we love sharing what we know, and we also love learning from those who, you know, are older than us, more experienced, and have a lot of knowledge that we could draw from. So we're just dispensing what we have. What we garner, we dispense it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We, we, love, we love this ministry so much. We started our lives very young, like how my... Uh, hot hubby here had stated, we started life very young and we had to understand how to navigate and navigate by turning up, looking to each other and then looking up, you know, and, and that really has what equipped us and I, I believe strengthened us for 15 years now and, you know, to, to be able to move within the couple's ministry, we are all about making sure that every couple, every family is moving forward towards a pathway God has for them, but also enjoy doing it, you know, mm -hmm. laughing and smiling along the way, not just having the vision and chasing it down, but enjoying the process. Amen. I love the attitudes that you all are carrying into. I love just, you know, being so open and like, hey, we don't know everything, but we want to share what we what we have learned and also want to learn. I love that attitude. Love the attitude of you know, just enjoying the journey. I mean, yep. so many of us get caught up in the seriousness of the journey, but I just yeah. love how you're like, hey, have a little bit of fun. Yeah. Just joke around a little bit, yeah. right? Just enjoy it. Like, don't, not everything is so serious. Yeah. I, I love that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely amazing. I'm so I know that you're definitely the right fit, and I for this topic because of that attitude right up front. And 
you you both are doing an amazing job in the leadership as a couple's pastors as well. Thank so you, thank you. just super, super happy to know you, super happy to have you on tonight because I know that we do have a lot to learn from the experiences that you do have to share. Because I think, you know, you can really relate to those just starting out because you remember very clearly what that was like and the challenges that you faced, right? Even in that courting phase. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and then through to mature marriages as well. So yeah. this is awesome. Thank so excited. You. Thank you. So we're going to head into a few questions just to start the ball rolling, and we'll see where this conversation takes us tonight. But just to kick it off, I just want to start out, you know, by focusing a little bit on those who are not yet married first. Married folks, don't worry, we will get to you for sure. But I also want to include those who are in that pre-marriage phase because I don't want to leave you out either. Yeah. So for those who are courting and hoping to move toward that marriage phase, you know, right now we're in a pandemic, there's a lot of lockdowns, a lot of restrictions, right? So we can't meet maybe as much physically, you know, in person, maybe go out for coffee and things like that. It's just not the same as it would normally be. So wondering, and I'd love to hear from each of your perspectives, um, wondering what are your advice and suggestions to those who are out there and really wanting to develop their relationship in that courting phase to move toward the marriage level? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think, you know, the pandemic, as you mentioned, it, it is very challenging and we're all in this. Nobody's exempt from this time that we're in. And, you know, I think back to when we courted. It was a very uh, swift process. Um, you know, we went from, I think within a year, we went from just talking to being parents. You know, I remember leaving my last lecture at, at Carleton to go meet her at the hospital. So it, you, this is where we're coming from. So, but thinking about the pandemic and those who are courting, I think it's, uh, even though there's a threat that's kind of looming uh, around us, there's a real opportunity here because I think one of the most important aspects of courting is to get to know the person that you're going to marry. Like when you're courting, it's not just hanging out and having a partner or having somebody that you're dating. This is somebody who you plan or you expect to have a life with, right? So I believe that the pandemic offers the opportunity to really discover yourself first. So a great opportunity for self-discovery. And then another opportunity to discover that person. I think outside of the pandemic, the we get to kind of hide behind social activities. You know, you could go to the restaurant, you could hang out, you could dress up and do all these things, but, and you get to put on a facade. You, you could pretend for 10 months before you get married. The, the opportunity is not there right now. The opportunity is for you to be honest, for you to be upfront, to be real, and I think you get to ask those tough questions yeah. and you can wait for an answer, a real proper answer, and then you can make a decision from there. Outside of the pandemic, when you get to go out and hang with friends, you could ask those tough questions, but you might not get the answer that you want because everything is bright and shiny. We're hanging out, we're having fun, we're partying, you know, we're taking pictures, social media, blah, blah, blah. That's not there right now. So I think the real opportunity for those who are recording don't just look at the threat that you can't be out and about. Look at the opportunity that you're going to get to really know the person that you're going to spend the rest of your life with. So yeah. I, think, I think there's a real opportunity there. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I also want to add to that. A lot of couples, after they get married, within the first five, five years, is it? Within the first five years, 50% five, end in divorce. And it's because they're getting to know who their partner is. You know, yes, you're in the same space, but part of being in the same space is you're, you're getting to know a new personality. You're having to interact with that personality. So as, as Gary here is, is sharing, you know, getting to the actual core of courting, which is marriage. The goal is marriage if you're courting properly and successfully. And with that, understanding who the individual is spiritually, how do they carry their spiritual life? If all you're having to do predominantly is through a screen, you have no other choice but to just keep speaking. 
And if that's your vision is just to keep talking, 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 yeah, it's great. You can sweet talk them as long as you want, but after a while, it's gonna get old, right? Because life is getting difficult. And last week, we spoke about mental health. A lot of things will start triggering. So again, getting back to that core, that is the importance in discovering. And I know the, those uh, dating apps have increased significantly, but don't just look at the pictures and, and see someone cute or attractive, but really understand who they are. You know, I love, I just love that because, you know, you're looking at it with that attitude of, it's an opportunity. Right. And I really like the fact that you mentioned, um, you know, getting to know yourself, first of all, because sometimes we get caught up in the busyness of life and we're looking to get into a marriage and whatnot. But we don't even know who we are and what we like to do and what we don't like and what we're looking for, because sometimes we don't even slow down enough to think about it. So I love the fact that you brought up as well, getting to know who you are. You know, at a, at a pandemic time when you're spending more time by yourself perhaps, you get to know who you are. And then you also added that you get to know who the other person is. You're not distracted by all of these dinners and coffees and, you know, going out and dressing up and, you know, all that fun stuff, which is fun, yeah. but you can always do that later when you are married. Yeah. And you actually get to know the core of the person. And then I also like the last thing that you brought, you mentioned about the mental health and about people's triggers and stressors. So you actually get to see how the person reacts to and handles stress, which can be key to the future. So I really, really like that. And then thinking about that, so thinking about you know, watching, getting to know the person better, watching how they handle stress. How do you think that will then help the person when they move into those first five years of marriage? Which, that is the goal, right? So we don't court forever. It gets pretty old, as you said. So we have a philosophy that the first five years of marriage is an entire listening exercise, right? This means that you're listening to how your spouse handles stress, what are their cues when they're happy, when they're excited? What are their cues when they're distressed, when, the, when they're under pressure? Um, so within that listening exercise, it's really about effective and targeted listening. So your, this person will have your, your undivided attention, so to speak. So, you know, dealing with the, 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 the mental health side, I'm not an expert on this, but I know that even with mental health, there's a lot of cues that you could tell that a person is, uh, is suffering. And we're not really schooled on that because you know, we could tell if somebody's on the floor bleeding and we will know what to do. If we can't help, we call 911 or we try and get some help. But if somebody's reacting or having a, a moment or a trigger, something that triggered them, they're having a, some type of moment, when it comes to mental health, we don't know how to deal with that. Mm -hmm. And that takes practice and it takes expertise. We have trained people that can handle this stuff and then you have regular folks who can't. But as far as you know, couples go, it's very important to understand what those cues are. Um, we like to, when we did therapy, uh, the therapist introduced us to the iceberg. Mm -hmm. And if you know anything about icebergs, icebergs a big giant piece of material in the ocean, ice, ice material in the ocean. But what we, as big as they are, what you see on top of the surface is only 10% of the total. Right. The biggest piece is underneath. Mm -hmm. So. Even the cues that we see from our partner, that's just a small representation of what's underneath. And you only get to know that through conversation, through talking, 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 mm -hmm. and listening, 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 so that you understand what, uh, what's really under the iceberg. And, and even going further with that is getting to even know their facial expressions. You know, my, my husband, 100%, I can tell when he's happy, when he's stressed, when he just needs a minute to just step away because the house is wild, you know? And I would let him sneak away, go upstairs, take his nap, and I'll even suggest to him sometimes, just lock the door so that way the youngest one doesn't just walk in. He needs that exit moment so then that way I can get him to apply being daddy again, being husband again, when, when he needs to in the next couple minutes or hours, et cetera. <laughs> no, 
really, I really like that because it's like, like you said, it's the iceberg, right? And so you're trying to dig out who the person really is on the inside. And so you're asking with the intent to understand. It's not small talk, right? It's not like, how was your day? Fine. Okay, great. No, we're trying to go beyond that. And if, if we get caught in that cycle of just, how was your day? It was fine then we're not actually getting to know one another, right? And so then when we face circumstances like this, where we're together all the time, if we don't know each other very well at that level, that is when things start to fall apart and disintegrate. I was reading somewhere in a newspaper article that uh, um, an Ontario lawyer was saying that clients wanting divorces has risen by 30% since the pandemic. That is outrageous. So I think the things that you're saying here are super, super important, even just in preparation for dealing like so with something that we're in right now. Yeah. Even to expand on, on what you had stated, you know, um, being able to ask, how was your day? Fine. You may need to come back and ask that question again. How was your day? Fine. If you're still getting that answer three hours later, you, you ha that's where patience now has to step in because you don't want to hear fine, right? But you're seeing in the expressions, they are not fine. So maybe you might need to pour him a, a cup of tea, right? And the way he likes it with three sugars and two milks, right? <laughs> in order for you to get more than just fine. So yeah, def definitely, I just wanted to add that. Well, point. even to that point, I was, I believe it was yesterday, I, was, I have two computers going, do, doing two different things. And so I pop back around, I sit across from my son, and I say, hey, where, where's your mom going? He's like, she just left. And I knew what that meant. Yeah. Work was done, it was a long day, a lot of long meetings, and she just took the keys and didn't tell me where she was going. <laughs> but I knew that she just wanted to make her around five minutes, and she was back within 15 minutes. Yeah. So even I hear what's happening. The day was stressful, she's gone. I'm not gonna text her or call her. How come you just left and you didn't tell me where you're going? I know what's happening because I've seen it I'm, and I'm listening and I understand why she just gets up, grabs the keys, leaves without telling me. Yeah. I, I really feel like this is why the Bible says that um, love is patient, yeah. right? Because we have to know that, you know what? Different people have different triggers. Yeah. Hey, she left, I could get mad. Yeah about that or I could just be like yeah she needed some space I know her yeah. right I could hear how her day kind of went from yeah. <laughs> from where I was sitting I'm just gonna give her some space right. I think that's an amazing point right or you know what I know that you know I just need to maybe make him some tea the way that he likes it or whatever that is but really getting to know each other understanding those triggers yeah. And then being able to accommodate and support the person. It's not always about ourselves. Sometimes it's about meeting the other person where they're at yes. and caring for them. Right. Yes. Right. Yep. right. Absolutely. Right. Awesome. Well, along these lines, I have a, a sort of a follow-up question. So, you know, we're together all the time, right? And both of you just talked about ways that you can create space for your spouse. But I thought we could explore that a little bit deeper. So, you know, and some people need more space than others. And often in a spouse, sometimes we have opposites, right? Somebody who needs a lot of space and somebody who doesn't need a lot of space and wants to be together all the time. So in this situation where we're all together, especially people who also have kids that are all together and you all in the same space all the time, how do you really make sure that your spouse is taken care of and supported so that they can be individuals as well and not just you know, part of the couple or part of the family union? Again, part of the listening exercise. So uh, when, the, when the pandemic started and I started working from home, we, we kind of had to move around to find the optimal workspaces. Mm -hmm. And obviously, like I said, my son sits across from me and that's because you know, he wasn't doing what he was supposed to do, so now he needed extra monitoring so I could see him and make sure that he's, he's on, on course. So one of the things that we do in our house, first of all, we try to optimize the space. So if I give you a layout, I sit at the dinner table, my son's across from me, Julie's to my left, our five-year-old is to her left, 
And then we, our 10-year-old, she's upstairs locked in a room, and then our 13-year-old floats around the house. So this is how we, because she likes to, one minute she's on the couch, next minute she's in the bedroom, bathroom, wherever. And then our 10-year-old, she likes peace and quiet. And then Juliana, when she has her meetings, because of the attention to detail that she, she, she needs to give, she goes and locks herself in a room as well. So we've had that conversation about who needs what, when, and how we can provide it. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one thing. And the other thing is, um, because our jobs are very different, and we do have to accommodate that for eight hours a day, minimum, uh, we try to make sure that each person has the space and the resources that they need. My job, um, it's kind of different where, you know, if I don't have a meeting, like I could work whenever. So outside of meetings, I could perform my tasks at midnight. And I'm not the greatest sleeper, so sometimes I'm up at midnight doing my work or I'm waking up at 4 a.m. to do what I have to do. So with that type of flexibility and the understanding that that flexibility exists, we just give each other the space to move around. And if we need, if they need anything extra, we try and provide it as best as possible. And because I understand where her job requires, what she needs to do her job, um, I make sure that I am not a, a disrupt, like I don't disrupt what she has to do. Mm -hmm. Because if I disrupt what she has to do, she's going to disrupt what I have to do at the wrong time, which is when I might want to get out of the house, you know, go play basketball with my son or do something else. So it's kind of like we try to reciprocate as much. So I give, she gives, I take, she takes. And just making sure that each person is taken care of. And in the midst of it, again, we talk and we listen. It's, it's just listening. It, it, even if nothing is said, we look for the nonverbal cues as well. We just make sure that we're listening and we're doing our best, our complete best, to accommodate each other. And I think that's, uh, that's what's working for us right yeah. now. Yeah, definitely. And, and even being open with your schedule. Most, most positions, if you have meetings for the following day, you know around what time would those meetings be. Yes, I, I understand, sometimes they, you do have to adjust. However, if you're able to set those, and then you have children, I mean, we have a five-year-old who, in that virtual, they're supposed to be you know, cutting up construction paper and all of this, and I'm the one who's now cutting up the construction paper, and it's, it's at the point now where he tells me, mommy, you're supposed to cut out a heart for Mother's Day, right? So, <laughs> so when, when, it, when it comes to those types of things, you know, me jumping in and knowing my husband's schedule, knowing even our older children's schedule, allows me to be able to say, you know what, older son, 13-year-old um, daughter, can you step in and help mommy out because mommy has to step away for a meeting, or Gary, can you jump in for that? So sharing each other's schedule is extremely important, but one of the things that I'm also gonna add to it that I personally like to do, I'm one of those that will get up in the morning and treat it like how Pastor Rita had stated last week, treat it like an actual day, you know? So being able to get up, getting myself together, throwing on my lipstick, making sure my hair is in order, you know, put it, choosing a really nice outfit. And, and that puts me in that position of you are stepping into work. And when I'm stepping into work, it also prepares me for ending the day. Because that's the thing with working from home is when you're in your pajamas and you have all of these things that you have to do, you don't end the day properly. So now when it's time to step into mommy wife mode, and, and, and want to take care of your, your household, that becomes difficult. So like Gary had shared, me taking off for 15 minutes, I needed to take off. He's comfortable with that. So I can take off, refresh my mind, and come back, okay? If he takes off, I'm losing my mind. I'm usually calling him down. <laughs> so know what each one is comfortable with and work together to make sure that you're able to move forward and keep that structure within the workplace, but also within the home life. That's awesome. A lot of communication yes. is really, really That's necessary. Important. Both the talking, like yes. share, share what you're going through, share when you have your meetings, let other people know, right? And then also the listening. 
So, oh, sorry, what did you say? What did you need? What time did you have to be at that meeting? What time do you have to be logged on? And really paying attention to that. And I love how you even included the whole family, right? Older siblings can help younger ones. It's okay to delegate some of those tasks. And I also like the highlight of keep the structure to your day. Separate home time versus work time, even though you're in the same room or the same house. Separating those times can really help the whole family, including the children, adjust to which time it is. Is it time to play? No, it's not time to play. You know, it's work time or you know what? It's after supper. It's, you know, work is done. Mom's changed her clothes or mom's gone out for a bit and come back. So whatever your routine is, keeping one, making sure that you're separating out those times and that communication is so key. I think you guys just shared just so much right in that short little answer there. It was, it was really, really valuable, and I think it'll help a lot of people. Praise God. Um, so speaking of communication and hearing each other out, I have a question here that says, how do you deal with a difference of opinion on something serious or something that's so prevalent right now, for example, COVID-19 or the, uh, maybe an opinion on the vaccine. Some people are pro-vaccine, some are against, or any other major topic. I mean, there's so many to pick from out there. Politics is a huge one. So what happens in a marriage when one spouse feels strongly about one thing and the other feels strongly about the other thing? How do you navigate that as a couple? Yeah, I think... Um Spouses have, you know, when you get married, you try to influence each other, and you'll have the dominant voice, if you will, that tries to always pull the one spouse to their way of thinking. And that's not really, pos that's not really positive influence. Positive influence, yes, you're trying to get buy-in, but you also want to make sure that the person who you're trying to influence has all the information. So... If you can't divulge all the information, then you probably need to go and get some more information. So I think when it comes to, you know, opinions, especially if you think about the, the COVID vaccine, uh, a friend of ours, we had a conversation with her, and her rationale for taking the vaccine was that she was exposed to the vaccine at a high rate. She works in the hospital. So her reason for taking the vaccine, even though her husband's kind of sitting in, on a different angle with it, was that she was going to take the perspective of, I need to protect my family. Mm -hmm. So if you, if, you, if you sit down and objectively look at, you know, the risk, the cost, whatever, these are ways that you can actually begin to formulate a position. And if one spouse has to take it, for example, for work, then that might be the direction that you go. But if it's, if it's a situation like us where we're home and we got to figure, okay, do we do this thing or not? And I might be apprehensive about all the stuff that's swirling around in the news, you know, the, the blood clots and the people that are passing. And really understanding, you know, what my risks are, what her risks could be, but then giving ourselves enough time to get to a point where we can make a decision. I think when it comes to the vaccine, at some point, you know, we got to think about the general public right now where we can kind of think about ourselves. While we have the space to consider ourselves, I think we should gather as much information as possible, but constantly share. Mm -hmm. Constantly share with the, and that's, that's part of the communication. Here's what I found out today about this vaccine. Here's what I found out today about this decision that we're trying to make. Here's what I know. How do you feel about it? And then she could go back and she could gather her set of information we put on the table, we sort it out, and we see how it fits at this point in time. And we just take it one step at a time, at a time, at a time, until we get to a place where we're like, okay, here's a decision that we're going to make, and we're both going to be accountable to this decision. So when it comes to influencing our spouses, rather than trying to manipulate or trying to force them to jump to our side, I think it's very important to be patient in the information gathering process until you get to a point where you have enough information to objectively make a decision that fits the family. And at the end of the day, the decision has to fit the family. It's not just to benefit one person, it has to move the family, the marriage forward. Mm -hmm. And with, with Gary and you know, him and I, we have uh, two different personalities that work very well. 
I'm sure you can tell I, I speak from my heart always and my emotions come out first before actual logical thinking. For him, <laughs> for him, no, you're good, you're good. He, he, he will come forth with Julie, come with facts. So here I am speaking, blah, right, just saying whatever I want to say. But the process of saying, okay, now I have to approach my husband in the pathway that he would prefer. Yes, he'll still give me that space to be emotional and speak emotionally over why we should be walking towards that direction or why we shouldn't be walking towards that direction. But at the same time, I have to come with facts. So it's also nice to actually set a deadline. Because when it comes to facts, there's facts coming in consistently. And then your emotions are always going. You're gonna go back and forth consistently. And I know there's a lot of couples out there that have these two different personalities. So if you actually set that deadline of, okay, honey, we need to set an actual decision properly for what we want our future to look like and our family's future to look like, Let's set it within two weeks. And then from there, we know what pathway we want to walk. I, I like your openness, sort of. Like, the way that you explained it is a very healthy way of making decisions, which is absolutely amazing. And, you know, with something like the COVID-19 vaccine and just how, you know, let's give ourselves some space because right now we have some time maybe to make those decisions together in a way that supports our family and is the right fit for our family. So giving each other some space as well, as you mentioned, you know, to each go through your own process, right? Yep. And look for your own facts, you know, and then come together and fact check together. You know, sometimes it's a matter of opening the computer. This is what I heard, I, you know, and opening it together and having a real um, discussion, right? So I, I absolutely think that your, your suggestions are amazing. I mean, they're just such healthy approaches to that open decision-making process, even when it could be controversial. It doesn't have to be. Give each other some space. Don't try to manipulate them, as you said, because that's just not, you know, you're not there to force people. Everybody's still an individual. And as you mentioned, we all have our own personalities. Some of us are more emotional than others, you know? So we thank God for that. Um, I have another question, actually. How can you keep a marriage spicy and vibrant? So now I'm moving like straight into the passion, right? So we've discussed all the logistics. We've discussed, you know, getting the kids schooled. We've discussed making decisions. We've, we've moved through a lot quite quickly. So now how do we keep that passion alive? How do we keep the relationship vibrant and somewhat spicy? We can't go out anywhere. We, we covered that, right? Can't really do too much. I mean, we have some options, but not many. So what can can we do to keep the marriage alive? Good question. Um, Superb question. <laughs> <laughs> so Julie has three words to describe any decision making about the stuff that we do. <laughs> so if I'm going to bring anything to her, it has to fit these three categories. If it meets one criteria, or one of the criteria, then we're good to go. If it meets all three, then we're definitely good to go. So the more we get out of the three, the better. It has to either be fun, cute, or sexy. <laughs> Those are her, her three things. So if, if I'm thinking of anything that, okay, maybe we need to find something to do. It's been a while. We haven't, been, we haven't done anything. It's got to fit one of those things. So that works for us. Very simple. You know, if, is it fun? Is she going to enjoy it? Is, it? is it cute? Sure, right? So I think even in this time, um, to keep things spicy, spicy, freaky, was <laughs> my bad, I forgot where we're at. So anyways, I guess you guys could determine what, what you want to mean by spicy. <laughs> we're married folk, man. We can, all right, anyways. Um, now, is, it's, now is just the time to really, you know, dig a little bit deeper. Things aren't available. You can't go to the restaurant. You can't just go hang out. You can't go to museums and do the same stuff over and over, go to the market. Now you got to figure out, okay, what can I do with my spouse that's, that's fun or exciting that's going to require a bit of creativity, that's going to require a bit of thinking. I think now is a great time to, you know, pick up a hobby. 
you know, uh, hiking, um, going for walks, mm -hmm. maybe taking up biking. It's a great, despite the threat, it's a great opportunity to explore other things. Mm -hmm. And I think when, uh, when we had the, the freedom, you know, uh, without the pandemic, it was just, it was easy to just make reservations. Your wife comes and says, hey, we haven't done anything in a while. So you call up a restaurant you, and you, now you're going out. Now you got to think about what you're going to do because you can't. How, how many times are you going to go walking? <laughs> right? Before she's going to be like, dude, you've been doing this thing every Thursday. You got to figure out something else. So there's, there's a real opportunity now to think outside the box. And, um, you know, I think once you start doing that, then, you know, things will start spicing up a little. <laughs> and obviously couples are different, right? And the, the, the spouses are different and the things that gets them going is very different. So, again, the conversations, the listening, the, the looking around and seeing what we've done that didn't work, asking, what would you like to do? You wanna, can you just try this? Let's test it out. If, we both don't, if you don't like it, we won't do it again. We'll find something else to do and just kind of take turns. And once you start connecting on those levels, you'll find that the intimacy starts to build as well. Yeah. And uh, the psychological connections start to build, the spiritual connections start to build. Once you start finding ways to connect and talk and just kind of build new routines, build new habits and so forth. And uh, yeah, if, the spice yeah. will come back and you know, even, my bad even, for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> even even to, uh, to add to what Gary was saying, you know, and make, you can really make it fun. You can be sitting right beside your spouse and send them a text message. And it, it's funny because I, I do that nonsense all the time. And I'm pretending as if I'm somebody else, right? And he might even be like, oh, gosh, Julie, who are you today? She actually has a couple of hairstyles. <laughs> You know, I so do. I got to figure out who's who when so she comes downstairs. Exactly. Most when days, I come so. downstairs with a different hairstyle or a different wig. And a he's... different attitude with the hairstyle. So, yes. Yeah. And a different outfit. Right? <laughs> so one day I might be cute. One day I might be fun. Another day I might be sexy. Right? So if you are trying to find ways to spice it up, really get creative with it. And even if you have older children, because you can't go outside for a walk if you have very small ones, but try to put them to bed early and say, you know what, honey, we're gonna have a movie night, set it up in the living room or even inside of your bedroom, watching something off of Netflix right there on your bed. That can be fun, pop popcorn and say, we're, we're gonna do a date night right here and I'm creating it tonight but create it within your home, right? So you like to go to movies, create that within your home. You like to go ice skating, hey, you know what, pretend you have ice skates on with socks and ice skate around the house, you know? So they're just trying to bring that creativity, think outside the box a little bit to be able to say, let's keep that spice going, let's keep that fun going because we want to keep that intimacy growing within this relationship, not just frustrated with each other all day. And to <laughs> add to that also, when you make plans, like stick to the plans. So, hey, we're going to do this at 7 o'clock. Don't be working trying to send a report in at 7.05. You're going you're gonna to mess it up. So if you make plans, set some timelines like you would. You know, we got to get to the restaurant for 7.30 or else we're going to take our seat away. We got to get the kids out of here by 9.15 so we could get our time. <laughs> Just be very specific and let your spouse know what you plan to do so they can prepare for it. Unless they like surprises. If they like surprises, go, 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 go wild. If they don't, then you know, obviously take your time and prepare them as well. Wow. You just gave us so much right there. Um, so creativity. Now you have to get creative. No choices. Have fun at home. You know, be a different person. Do your hair a different way. Have a different attitude. Whatever it is you have to do to shake things up a little bit at home. I love the idea of, you know, just getting out of the box, trying something new. And the more you have fun together, it builds that intimacy, right? And then, you know, I even had a coworker who, she, she went camping, because they, they love to camp, but you can't go camping right now. So they set up the tent with like some candles and stuff like that, right? Put the kids to bed on time. It's, there's a bedtime, you know, set routine. As you mentioned, if you're gonna, if you have a date night planned, 
make sure you start them early, reminding them it's bedtime, five more minutes. Okay, yeah, it's bedtime in your room. You know, it's important. It sounds funny, but it's, it's important. We've got to set those boundaries so that we can have some alone time and some intimacy so that we can continue to connect as couples. There was just so much wisdom in, in just what you guys said right there. I think so many tips. I mean, I hope some people out there have some ideas. Yes. So hopefully we'll see some spicy marriages. Actually, we don't want to see it. We just want to hear about it or just know that it's happening at home, exactly. that your marriage will be spicy during the pandemic. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much. So, you know, speaking of bedtime, wondering about um, balancing that parenting relationship the parenting and the relationship in close quarters while at home and working and all of this stuff. So how do you balance that parenting and support each other as parents while trying to maintain that intimacy and that, you know, spark in your relationship? So we have four children. Uh, we have a 15-year-old boy who's doing 15-year-old boy things. Uh, we have a 13-year-old girl who's doing 13-year-old girl things. We have a 10-year-old girl and a five-year-old boy. So the reason I'm saying that is because they all have very different needs. One of, the, one of the things that we got out of this time from being in the same space for the last 15 months or 13 months, 15 months, we, my son, I literally watched my son get taller than me. <laughs> I would have missed that. I would have just came home one day and said, hey, wait a minute, you're growing because we're not around each other, you know, for how many, 40 hours a week, right? So seeing that was really fun to see. And him, again, doing 15-year-old things, we had to have a lot of conversation, a lot of disciplinary sessions. And we've had to really hone in on how we discipline him yeah. and the kind of privileges that we give him and the type of consequences that we implement when he, you know, he falls off the tracks. So that part of the conversation, that part of the, the activity, actually brought us closer together because we had to talk about it because we have very different disciplinary style. Mm -hmm. I'm Jamaican, we yell, we make noise, we beat. Um, she's from Tanzania, they talk things through. So now I had to adjust to that and, I, and I, looking at my son's personality, he doesn't react well to the, you know, yeah, he wants to be sat down and spoken to and, you know, you come to a conclusion, you set, you come with a remedy and then we, next steps and then we talk about it a couple hours later. That's what he wants. So even having to listen to her and say, hey, you know, you got to, you got to take it easy. And you know what, actually, you know what, she wilds out sometimes when she disciplines. So I had to go to and say, hey, yo, you know, you got to pull that back a little bit. So. Even while we're taking care of the children, we have to be attentive in how each other is responding to our kids changing. Yesterday, we had a, it was a situation between the five-year-old and the 13-year-old. They had a little situation, and I just went at them, you know, and then she had to pull me back and say, hey, you know, let's, let's talk this through. So the point is, because we're both engaged in parenting, it's not go to your dad or go to your mom. She'll deal with it. It's, hey, get in here. We're going to talk about this. So we're both actively involved in all of their lives, and so it makes it easier to, you know, balance the parenting and our relationship. And it's, it's interesting because the more you do together is the closer you get, mm -hmm. and the more you learn about each other. And I, like I said, the, there's always the opportunity to learn with your spouse from your spouse, and I think that's, that's one of the advantages that's... Uh, that's coming out of the space that we're in right now. A lot of really good opportunities, we just gotta see it. Mm -hmm. And then to even expand what he was saying is, you know, being able to um, parent together really has brought a lot of, brought, brought us closer. But what I appreciate about that is that it's also uh, brought our children more attentive to our marriage. They'll, they'll see me or dad walk up to me and we'll actually make out in front of them on purpose, just so that way it drives them nuts, you know? And the th they'll walk away yelling, ew, you know? And, and it makes us laugh. However, when we're saying now, mom and dad are stepping away, we're gonna have our date night upstairs to go just watch a movie and hang out. 
we'll lock the door. No one comes bother us because they're like, I don't want to (laughs) randomly, you know, see them making out because the date in their heads at that age is making out, you know? So for them, they're saying, okay, let them go off and do their own thing as long as they give us the space to also do our thing. So being able to to openly share um, your your marriage to your children, it actually really benefits you. And they're seeing that's what my my marriage should look like. You know, and that's that is a vision that we have had from day one is to show our children what a beautiful marriage should be looking like. You make mistakes, you forgive and move on, but also you enjoy every process and every every milestone that you have. And and that's why we openly share the marriage to the children. That's so that's so great. I mean First of all, just the supporting each other in the different styles. I I think most parents, you know, we all come from different backgrounds, right? Different upbringings. So discipline looks very different um, in different households. So navigating those differences, being open with each other, what works with what child, you know, and navigating that together. And then being open about your marriage with your kids because they're going to grow up and want to get married. And they, they, they need to know that, you know what, a husband should be loving his wife. They should be attracted to one another. They should be chasing each other down. You know, there should be that love and affection on an ongoing basis. You don't have to hide it. And that is sort of one of the benefits of, of this time is that, well, they're going to see the, the affection. Like, there's no missing it because you are together all the time. So, I mean, yeah, that's so great. I love it. Um, so we've actually come to the end of our time. If you can believe it, it flies. That went by really fast. We had fast. so much fun. Like as soon as we get into these conversations, <laughs> it's just so interesting. I always want to learn more. But before we close off, just wondering if you have any other wisdom that maybe you didn't get to share that you'd just like to highlight for the viewers before we close. Yeah, like you know, we started at the top of the show or the conversation that we are in a pandemic. And uh, everybody's under equal or similar pressure, you know? So understand that first and that we're all trying to navigate this. And your family is your marriage, your family, that's your first responsibility. So as you, you're out there staying safe, uh, make sure you take care of your family, make sure you take care of your marriage, take care of your children. Um, this, is, this is, again, learning exercise, listening exercise. We're right back to that. Um, this is very new. So we have to adjust and adapt and grow. So we have to be better listeners to our spouses, to our children. We're around them a lot more, so they're actually saying a lot more, even though they're not verbalizing it. We're seeing all their actions. We're seeing the, 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 the outcome of their thought process. We're seeing that live. We're not waiting for a phone call to say, hey, this is how I'm feeling. We actually see it play out. So I just want to encourage everybody out there, just, just be attentive, be listening, and... Don't forget that uh, everybody in the household is a servant to the family, and every husband is a servant to the, sp- to the wife, and every wife is a servant to her husband. So have that attitude. And I think once you embody that attitude, all the other stuff is just peripheral stuff. It just floats away because your mind and your attention is on the people that matter, your wife, your children. And direct it, of course, towards God. You know, I say all the time, keep everyone else quiet, hold on to your spouse's hands, and look up together. And when you're able to do that, even though you're going to get a lot of noise regardless, as long as you say you're good, yep, I'm good, honey. Are you good? I'm good. Then you're able to continue to move forward and seek true direction. Amen. I I love it. I love it. It's been so great having both of you on tonight, Pastor Gary, Pastor Julie. Thank you so much. Such a blessing, a really fun conversation. I don't know. Maybe we'll have to do this again sometime. (laughs) I don't know. But, you know, (laughs) you you mentioned um, prayer, and I would love if maybe Pastor Gary could pray for our viewers tonight and just pray for their marriages, their future marriages, their relationships. Absolutely. 
God, we love you so much. We appreciate you. We thank you for your many blessings, God, despite the, the time that we're in and the stresses and the struggles and the hustle and the bustle and everything that we have to deal with. Uh, so much uncertainty every day. But God, we know that you hold our future. God, we know that everything is, everything good, everything righteous, everything blessed comes from you, oh God. We appreciate you for that. And I want to pray for the couples, the families out there that despite whatever they're dealing with, uh, whatever they're facing, if they're hopeless or if they feel helpless, whatever it is, oh God, wherever they are, I pray that your hand of mercy will be on their lives right now. I pray that God, you'll reach down, you'll touch them, you'll scoop them up, and you'll just love them and remind them that they're loved. God, go with us tonight. We thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. amen. Thank you so much once again. It's been such an awesome conversation, so much wisdom. I hope everybody took some notes. I'm going to go home and rewatch and take my notes <laughs> because I, I just think we learned so much, and it was so fun. You guys are so fun. Thank oh, you so thank much you. for joining us tonight. Um, God richly bless you. I know that some people in the comments are calling for a part two. Uh, people are so excited. They didn't want it to end. So we thank God. Thank you so much. God bless you. And to those of you out there, thank you so much once again for tuning in. It has been an awesome time in the Lord. What a blessing. Praise the Lord. We always love these insights into wisdom conversations. Feel free to also text the anonymous number with any topics you would like to see in the future. We want to make sure that we're covering what you want to know about. And now tonight, just as we have soaked in the presence of the Lord, let us take some time and sow unto God. You can give right from your cell phone wherever you're at tonight. You can give via text to give. You can give via e-transfer. You can give on PayPal, whichever method is most convenient for you tonight. Just go ahead and tap on those buttons and make it happen. And let us just take a moment and pray over the offering. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. We thank you for even the ability to just sow into your kingdom tonight. My God, we thank you for every ounce of wisdom. We thank you for every blessing. My God, strengthen our marriages. Strengthen our relationships. For those who are not yet in marriage, my God, may you bring them to the right partner in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, did you like this video? Make sure you hit that like button below. Let us know that you enjoyed it tonight, as well as share it with your friends. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hit the bell notification so that you never, ever, ever miss anything that we are streaming online because we want you to be a part of it. Do not forget that tonight we have our midnight prayer, so we want to see you online with us tonight as we pray together and seek the Lord as well. Starting Friday night at 6.30 p.m., we have a prophetic conference with Apostle Frank. Please make it a point to attend. It is on Zoom. Share it with your friends and family. It is going to be amazing. 6.30 Friday, 6.30 Saturday, 6.30 Sunday. It's going to be awesome. And, of course, we've got our celebration service on Sunday morning. Hallelujah. So we will see you tonight for a midnight prayer. Let's just take a moment and close in prayer. Father, again, we thank you. We glorify you. My God, you are so awesome. As your people go tonight, my God, may your wisdom and strength go with them. May you carry them into the night in the name of Jesus. Let your presence be upon them in Jesus' name. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God richly bless you. Have a fantastic, amazing night and be strong in the Lord, transforming lives and raising leaders because you matter. It's another one, yeah Whoa. I, It's another one, yeah I, I connect to the throne like 3G Covered by the blood can see me Got you make it look so easy Splash 
She live in water like Fiji I wake up and let your word come feed me Spirit of the Lord come steer me So devil don't come try to cheese me No bad man thing come near me So I wonder Where would I be where the trouble is so wonder You got me shine bright but you don't ever slumber Lord you're watching over me In your palms you hold the sea It's an honor just to see that you still Cover me with your love Cover me with your love I feel to love again I feel to love again Cover me with your love Cover me with your love I feel to love again I feel to love again Me to the brim again. I wanna hear that voice so still again. Let me plug to the source, connect to the Wi Fi, then surf on your grace like it's the internet. In your word, it was said so well five, six, seven times when a wise man fell in. Pop back with another flesh. And your love's where I find all my confidence. I'm running back to your love, to your face, to your promise. I know I ain't perfect, I ain't scared to be honest, but you forged me. Sent me to the earth from the sky and tell me you're gonna love me a long time. Whoa, whoa, three things I received from above. Faith, hope, and the greatest one is the love. So I live and let it show in my stride. Here to represent the most high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cover me with your love. Cover me with your love. I feel to love again. I feel to love again. Cover me with your love. Cover me with your love. I feel to love again. I feel to love again.